So we're talking about type 1 hypersensitivity reactions, uh, which involve IgE binding to proteins um, and IgE causing degranulation of mast cells and other granulocytes. So let's see this in action in different parts of the body, because depending on the part of the body that degranulation occurs, you're going to have different um, physiological effects. So let's start with the respiratory system. So here's a diagram of the respiratory system. And you have mast cells underlying the epithelium of uh, the respiratory system. Mast cells in your nasal cavity, mast cells in your um, lungs. And so if these uh, cells are responsive to an allergen, they're going to degranulate and cause symptoms. So let's say an individual is, in the, is allergic to an airborne allergen, pollen, dust mite, proteins. When an individual inhales these allergens, if the individual is allergic to them, that means they have IgE that binds these allergens uh, bound to their mast cells. And so as the allergens are taken in, uh, depending on which of these cells uh, are sensitive to IgE uh, or sensitive to the allergen because they're covered in IgE, that's where you're going to have the different responses. So if mast cells in your nasal cavity degranulate, uh, that's going to lead to what's known as allergic rhinitis, or hay fever. And this is characterized by swelling, fluid buildup, uh, white blood cell recruitment in the nasal cavity. And again, this is due to inhaling allergens that are causing degranulation of mast cells uh, in the nasal cavity. So there, these cells are releasing histamine, which is causing um, contraction of the muscles and sneezing, causing uh, increased vascular permeability and edema and mucus secretion, um, all the result of mast cell degranulation because of IgE binding to the allergen. If in, we're talking about mast cells that degranulate in the lungs, then we're talking about allergic asthma, which is more serious because you have fluid and mucus buildup in the uh, lungs, deeper in the lungs, um, which, and you've got uh, constriction of the muscles, bronchial constriction. You've got coughing, which makes it very difficult to breathe, inhale uh, air. And so as, actually allergic asthma uh, can be very deadly here. Uh, so having this allergic reaction deep in your lungs um, is life-threatening. Uh, treatments for these types of allergic reactions involve, uh, can involve two different substances. One are antihistamines. So if mast cells are degranulating and releasing histamine, which is causing inflammation, uh, antihistamines will block this. How do antihistamines work? Antihistamines um, bind the histamine receptor, and they block histamine from binding the histamine receptor. So antihistamines are typically antagonists. If histamine can't bind the histamine receptor, then um, mast cells can't uh, induce the inf well, mast cells can release all the histamine they want, but uh, the uh, histamine won't have an effect on the blood vessels. It won't cause edema. It won't cause the contraction of muscles. It won't cause the mucus production. So antihistamines don't stop mast cell degranulation. They stop histamine from functioning. Uh, the other compound that individuals typically take, especially for things like asthma, for example, is they inhale steroids. Uh, how do steroids function to reduce inflammation? Steroids block cytokine production. So in these individuals who are inhaling steroids, um, what they're doing, they're not inhibiting mast cell degranulation, but they are reducing the production of, they're uh, reducing the production of cytokines. And uh, if you're producing fewer cytokines, you're recruiting fewer white blood cells to the uh, infected site, or the, not the infected site, the uh, allergen responsive site, and uh, you're having less inflammation because of the reduced number of cytokines produced, and that helps reduce the number of white blood cells present in that tissue. So those are two therapies uh, that can be used to treat uh, hypersensitivities, overreactions of the immune system. So those are mast cells in the respiratory system. Uh, mast cells are in connective tissue underlying the skin. If these mast cells degranulate, you're going to get reactions within the skin. So in terms of allergens that can be present in the skin, 
uh, things like insect bites or bees or wasps that inject their venom into uh, our skin, uh, they can cause locally mast cell degranulation. And if that occurs, then you get uh, inflammation in the skin known as hives or urticaria. So that's localized mast cell degranulation in the skin, redness, swelling, um, fluid buildup. Uh, but these uh, allergens can actually also access the circulatory system. So if they leave the uh, dermis and enter blood vessels, allergens uh, can then cause degranulation of mast cells that are embedded in the vasculature. Remember, you've got connective tissue wrapped around your many of your blood vessels, and in that connective tissue, will, you will find mast cells. So if an allergen uh, accesses the circulatory system, it is possible they can cause mast cell degranulation uh, systemically all over the body, uh, which would lead to systemic anaphylaxis or anaphylactic shock. And we spoke about this way back in chapter one, or unit one, where uh, systemic inflammation, uh, either by, for example, TNF-alpha release from macrophages into the circulatory system can cause something very similar. So, um, mast cell degranulation in the circulatory system would cause blood vessels all over the body to become permeable and fluid would leave the blood vessels, enter tissues, and tissues would swell. And life-threatening swelling could occur in the tongue and in the throat, which would cut off circulation, uh, or I'm sorry, cut off respiration, uh, bronchial constriction, um, squeezing the, um, the uh, tubes in the lungs, and you would have blood vessel collapse because so much fluid is leaving the blood all over the body. So uh, this is how um, allergens that could enter the skin could cause uh, life-threatening systemic effects. Treatments for this type of uh, hypersensitivity include epinephrine or an EpiPen. So epinephrine, it is a hormone produced by our adrenal glands and it uh, can function here to reverse vascular permeability. So mast cells, when they degranulate um, and produce histamine, or we're talking about other aspects of inflammation like TNF-alpha, uh, that causes uh, vascular permeability. Well, epinephrine reverses vascular permeability, restores the tight junctions between endothelial cells in the blood vessels. And so when you reverse this um, change in the, the blood vessels, then the blood vessels are no longer permeable. And so swelling starts to go down in these areas here. And if the swelling goes down, hopefully you can um, save the, uh, the individual's life. So those are two examples of mast cells degranulating in different parts of the body.